51. I used to do a lot of athletics when I was younger. My, my father is big into athletics, so during the winter I, I do a bit of cross country and um, I do a bit of jogging with him, even though he still shows me up a bit. So how confident are you of Sunday? Um, I, I'm fairly confident. Um, I think a lot depends on midfield and if we can break even or come on, on top in midfield. Also, I think Cox's half-back line is very strong. And if we can hold him and pick up a lot of the breaks, then I think, you know, we, we're halfway there to beating him, you know. And Jer Keane cutting in for Clare. Jer Keane with his left boot, hurls it in, and over the bar, a fine point there from Jer Keane. We were on top of Cork most of the game. Um, you know, I think a lack of, lack, lack of experience in the end probably, you know, um, turned it in Cork's favour. Martin Corn. Throws it out to uh, Paul McGrath. Paul McGrath. There's no goal here. Unless Cork can win a breaking ball. O'Sullivan punches it down. In goes Buckley. And there is a goal here. And it's Buckley who gets it. John Buckley the score. I know the Cork accent is, is one that you can pick up easily, but for a Kilkee man to have a slight twinge of a Cork accent is unusual. Yeah, I've, been, I've been told that, all right, but um, I, I suppose I was down in Cork RTC during the year and um, you know I probably pick pick up a bit of it all right down there so uh, you know and it turns out that you probably will be playing against some of the Cork RTC lads on Sunday that's right um, Owen Sexton I went to college with him um, he's corner back and um, if I'm corner forward I, I'll be marking him probably and Martin Cronin also I went to college with him and um, he would probably be playing wing forward as well um, so we should have a bit of crack after the game <laughs> And there should be plenty of crack in the town of Ennis this weekend, with the Ennis Magical Arts Festival also being held. The capital, once a hurling stronghold, is now very much football dominated. And everybody will be going to Cusick Park. 1994, let's say, the amalgamation of Aero, the main club in Ennis, and Dora Bearfield, they won. They captured the senior football championship for the first year, and first time in 50 years. And it's a, the impetus has swung towards football in the town of Ennis. Um, this year, 1997, we have six members of the county football team, whereas, let's say, in the other previous years, let's say, Hurland was the main stronghold in Ennis. So, football is the main game, really, in Ennis now. I think there was always an attitude in Clare that if the town of Ennis got involved with the county football team, you'd have a far better side. Yes, there's a certain arrogance attached to townies, as they say. Um, let's say, when you have a townie playing, let's say, he just thinks about himself. He'll always go for the goal at the very end. Take, for example, Cahill Shannon, let's say, an Aerog man against Kerry, a point down, a minute to go in the game in the McGrath Cup final. Instead of slotting it over the bar, he went for the goal. That's kind of the towny attitude. It's, let's say, kill or be killed. I can remember last year I was, I watched both games from the stand and I wondered what it would be like to play out there. So this year I have my chance and I hope to take it now Sunday. There is a big step up because it's faster, especially championship, and you can watch it on TV for yourself. And the fact that you are playing in Ennis, uh, and I know it's not your home ground as such, but it is in Ennis, does that put actually more pressure on you? No, I don't think so. I have a lot of supporters out there. I know myself, a lot of my friends, they say they're going to the game, they'll be behind the goal, and they will be cheering us on. I don't think it's much more pressure than anywhere else, because I'm used to playing in Cusick Park now. We've trained there for a long time, so it should be OK. The Burren in North Clare is famous worldwide for its uniquely beautiful limestone landscape. For the people who live here, however, football plays a very important role. The village of Carron has one man on the Clare team for tomorrow. He plays his club football with Michael Cusick's. It's here, of course, Michael Cusick, one of the founders of the GA, was raised. But despite playing at intermediate level, Michael Hines is confident he can perform at the highest level. It's going to be a very fast game. You know, obviously, they're, they've played in Division 1, we've played in Division 2. It's going to be that much faster. I suppose we're going to have to be able to at least match that the speed and the pace of the game. Mm. If we don't, I mean, you can, we're probably going to be in serious trouble. I mean, just looking at even the game last Sunday between Meath and Dublin, you know, I mean, Dublin would be a highly rated team, but I probably it looked at times maybe as if they they ran into cul-de-sacs with the ball, you know, at times maybe that was something they, from Division 2, you know, playing Division 2 over the last couple of years, you know, me seemed to have a more free-flowing, faster game, got rid of the ball quicker into open spaces, you know. So, I mean, we're going to have to look at that Sunday and try and try and match Cork. They're going to be fast, open, you know, and if we can match that, 
we'd probably be in with a shout, Marty, you know. One of the Clare football selectors is a banker by profession. But morning, noon and night, Seamus O'Doherty from Kilrush breeds football. He believes that this Banner County team can win. We, we realise the magnitude of our task on Sunday, playing Cork. Um, OK, we're playing them in Ennis. But Ennis, Cusick Park, we, we know holds no fears for Cork. They've been there, done that, as they say. Uh, Cork are one of the favourites for the All-Ireland. That's a fact. They're, they're, they generally are. Um, they're a star-studded team. They have so many household players that have won so much over the years. Um, in recent times, they, they, have, they were probably the most impressive team in the league, up to the league final. Uh, they probably disappointed themselves in the league final against Kerry, but I'm sure Larry Tompkins isn't too worried about that. If, if he feels he learned enough from it to prepare his team for the championship, he'd probably be happy with that. Um, it's going to be difficult. We realise we're, we're underdogs. I'm not playing up the underdog, t underdog tag or anything. We fully realise that. Uh, we know we feel we'll have to be at our best to beat them. Uh, we'll have to take a higher proportion of our scores than we have been taking of late. And against a star-studded team, a forward line to Cork have, obviously our defence will have to be at its best at the back. 1996 will forever be remembered for the purple and gold. The colours of Wexford were finally seen at Croke Park on All-Ireland Hurling Final Day. And to be truthful, they've been waving ever since. A new championship now begins for them. There's no Liam Griffin, but Rory Kinsel is a fine, honourable hurling man. A shrewd man, he's ready to launch his champions into battle, ready and keen to prove that last year was no fluke. Uh, we're putting our Leinster titles and all Ireland yeah. titles on, at stake on, on Sunday. Uh, our league campaign wasn't particularly uh, great. Uh, we went back to the second division. I don't see that as a major disaster. Uh, with a little bit of luck, we could have ended up with 10 points. We lost three games by a puck of a ball to yeah. Kilkenny, to Limerick and to, uh, uh, to Offaly. So uh, the, uh, it was very difficult to get the lads to focus in on the league, yeah. considering that they had just come down off the high of winning in the All-Ireland. But there'll be no such excuses on Sunday. Uh, we've been working hard uh, and preparing very well for Sunday. And uh, uh, as I say, we're putting our titles on the line and we won't give them up easily. We didn't put as much... Uh credence on the league this year maybe as we would have other years because uh, we had a long hard campaign last year and really our focus has been the 22nd of June but uh, we will have to say that we were slightly worried by the fact that we, di we didn't we only won one game in the league and we were relegated but I mean that's all water under the bridge now and uh, really the, the, the thing in hand is, is next Sunday for us and uh, that's, that's, that's really what we've built around and that's what our, our year really will depend on really. You have gone into the championship year after year hoping against hope that this might be the breakthrough you've done all that now is there a different feeling this year well i suppose you'd be a little more confident michael you know i mean to have an all ireland behind you takes a certain amount of pressure off a lot of the players in the extra team and certainly this this frustration that we used to have and maybe kind of you know it might have been the reason that we were hitting wides things like that and doing things that people might have felt a little bit stupid on the day that shouldn't be there next sunday because you know we don't really have that much to prove yet we still want to keep our title and i mean we're very focused on doing that some of your players have been around for a while, hoping and waiting for that breakthrough. We thought we'd see more retirements, I suppose, but in fact, most of the team is still together. And maybe that's an indication of how the, the, the older lads feel. They feel that there was no need to retire because they feel there's more in this team. And uh, uh, Billy Byrne and, and Jono and, and Martin and Tom and these, they, they, they want more. They've tasted it now and uh, they like what they, they got last year, so they want a little bit more of it. We're expecting a, a, an extremely competitive game and a very high quality game if it's anything like last year's game. Last year's game was probably one of the best games seen for years. So uh, we're going to show Offaly uh, uh, the respect they deserve. As far as I know, Offaly have um, contested, I think, 14 of the last 16 Leinster finals and won nine. So we have to show them respect. Last year, we only pulled away from them in the last five minutes. Uh, so uh, we're looking forward to it. And I expect a really, really strong challenge from Offaly. No doubt about it, the Leinster hurling final last year was the match of the day. They too have changed their manager. Eamon Cregan is gone and tomorrow sees his replacement, John McIntyre, face his biggest managerial test. The awfully boss has had the advantage of two championship outings already, but that doesn't seem to count when you're facing the challenge of dethroning the All-Ireland champions in your first managerial year. Somebody had told me even 12 months ago that I'd be awfully team manager and preparing them for a Leinster championship campaign. I wouldn't have believed it myself. Uh, when the approach was made to me, uh, were, were they interested in becoming Offaly manager or more importantly, let my name run going forward? Uh, at the time, I was nominated for the Galway Hurling uh, team manager's post. And as you're probably aware, I stood for that unsuccessfully twice in the past. So I went for an interview. I was interviewed by a seven-man committee and uh, I found them very professional and very thorough. 
I liked what I, he I heard and obviously they liked what they heard in response. John, you took over an awfully team that had played in two All-Ireland finals, won one of them. Now every team has its era and that can come to an end. Had you any doubts about taking over Offaly at that sort of point? I'm hopeful that the players will um, rediscover what they're about on Sunday. It's going to be a tough task. We're up against the All-Ireland champions. And uh, I don't know, Limerick's misfortune against Tipperary last Sunday. They looked a tired team. This Offaly team has been around about the same length of time as them. So obviously it is a worry. A little factor in that also would be the game against Leash. Now, with no disrespect to them, most people had hotly tipped you to win that game, and yet it was close. It was indeed, and, and what made it worse from our point of view was only three weeks before we played them in the Championship, we had uh, played them in the uh, National League at Tullamore. So we had got our warning. It wasn't as though we went in sort of blindfolded against Leash, and still they pushed us all the way. And let's be honest about it, we, we got away with murder in Pro Park day, that day, and I don't fancy off these chances of becoming a serial killer. Lee Shree put it up to us on the day and uh, we were lucky to come up with a win, got out of jail really, you know. But uh, fair play to Leash, they, they stuck in and kept at it, you know, and fair play to our lads too, you know. Kevin, up to that point, people had been talking about Offaly as being really the talking horse in Leinster this year. It's kind of changed people's views a little bit. It has because we didn't really have a good run in the league and we just we didn't qualify for the quarter-final places. Of course, um, we're still there at the top maybe top four or five teams in the country, so there's a lot to be talked about yet, you know. It's amazing, there's this theory being peddled up and down the country that this Wexford team is a Midland team, and that is a viewpoint that John McIntyre or the Offaly players don't share. We acknowledged, and we acknowledged their achievements last year, it was tremendous for hurling, and uh, Midland teams don't win the All-Ireland All titles, Michael. The fact is they beat Offaly, Kilkenny, Galway and Limerick with, with 14 men. So their credentials from last year are impeccable. I suppose going back before that, Offaly had a bit of an Indian sign on, on Wexford. Uh, they had a good championship record against them. But uh, Wexford defeated Offaly, obviously, in the Leinster final, the National League quarter final last year, and in the Walsh Cup. So not alone did they bury the Offaly bogey, I think they cremated it as well. Ever since Kilkenny stars Eamon Morrissey and James E. Shiner Brenner transferred their allegiance to Dublin, hurling fans have been looking forward to the meeting of the two counties. Dublin brushed aside the challenge of Westmead in the first round, while Kilkenny have been waiting and preparing. Through suspension and injuries, the Black and Amber will be far from full strength. Meanwhile, the Kilkenny lads in Dublin have been staying rather quiet. Of all the build-ups to big matches, this has been the most unusual. Eamon Morrissey, for the first time in his life, has been preparing to meet his former teammates in the famous Black and Amber jersey. He has wonderful memories, but still no regrets for joining Dublin. I'm in Dublin about uh, 10 years now, uh, working ever since uh, I came up here. Um, travelling and all that really was, there was a lot of travelling to do and then sometimes you're on sites and you'd be a lot more travelling to do. You could be putting in maybe two, 220 miles in, in a night to just go training and all that. So uh, after a couple of years, I'd done it for about seven or eight years and you know, eventually when I got married and all that, then I decided to chug it in and turn, convert me hurling up to here, you know. Mm. Are you enjoying it so far? Yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. It's not the, the pressure is not the same as it was with uh, Kenny. Um, so the, no one really expects a whole lot out of Dublin Hurling. And um, when you win a match, they're all lighter for you. And if you lose it, well, no one cares really anyway. So, but things have been going well this year for us. So. Comes back out to the big number nine from St. Bridges Club in Avon Road. Barry O'Sullivan. This is Eamon Morrissey. There's a danger here. And there it is. The first goal of the Leinster Charling Championship scored by.